Hi there. Today, we're gonna go over my favorite four beast tribes that you should do as quickly as possible. A little bit of a disclaimer, you should do all the beast tribes because they all have mounts and minions and other things that are locked behind them. Some have really cool glamours. Even more so, some of them have awesome stories, like some of the best stories that I've ever played in Final Fantasy XIV. This is not going to include the recent one that just got unlocked for Endwalker. It's, we don't know if it's gonna be good. It looks like it's gonna be really good, but we're not sure yet. <laughs> but the mount though is totally worth it because it's a hippo. I don't really think that they're spoiler, but I just wanted to give a fair warning. The first one is going to be the dwarf quest in Shadowbringers. This is one of, if not my favorite story that we had done throughout the Beast Tribe quest. There's a few others that are really good, but this one has such a riveting tale that I could not wait to keep doing the story and learn more about what's going on. The other thing that's one of my favorite parts of this story is that it gives me one of my favorite mounts, which is the rolling tankard. You're literally in a tank, like, <laughs> look at that. And you have a little blaster, look at that. Now the blasters don't do anything for the mount, but I feel like it's really cool to just go around and blasting people. And I think it's just really cute the way that she like kind of pops out of the tank and holds on. It's like a one person tank. I highly recommend doing the Dwarf Beast Tribe in Shadowbringers. It is a crafter. So if you're not into crafting and gathering, that might not be like your favorite one, but I really think this is like one of the best stories out there. Number two for me is going to have to be the Pixie Beast Tribe. Now, not only do you probably hear about this for experience as it's one of the best ways to level a alt job or even your main job from 70 to 80 every day. It gives you about, I believe 800 or 700,000 to a million experience. But the story itself was really very interesting and kind of dark in some places, which I personally like. I like when things have a more adult humor about them or like an adult theme for it. In every Beast Tribe you do, you're going to unlock and it's going to continue to build. And this is what we got to build a entire candy wonderland. It is really awesome to come here and take G poses, glamour poses, and all sorts of other things. I think this is number two on my list for probably one of the best Beast Tribes out there for mount, story, and just overall like good feelings. This is the mount that you get from the Pixie Beast Tribe. It's a little pig with big ears. <laughs> oh my gosh, the clipping on it makes it look like I have a pigtail. That's adorable. So if you like this mount, then you should definitely be doing the Pixie Beast Tribe quest. The next list on this tribal quest, I totally forgot to call them tribal quest because that's what we're changing to in 6.2. So make sure you're calling them tribal quest, not Beast Tribe quest. You get two mounts from this tribal quest. I'm going to have to keep correcting myself. One of them is the elephant mount and the other one is the um, true griffin mount, which you can see them when playing through right here. So you get this mount right here that you get to ride as well as this elephant mount. The elephant mounts one of my favorite mounts personally. I use it quite often. Like who wouldn't want to ride a big elephant around? <laughs> and majority of the time, if you're not doing beast tribes for the mounts or the minions, um, or like achievements or completionism, which a lot of people I think actually do do them for that. Uh, the stories are really, really fascinating. And you can tell that they had a lot more creative directive with these type of side stories because they're really, really thought out and put together really well. And you get an elephant. Like who doesn't want an elephant? These look so cool. <laughs> Very last beast tribe that I recommend to play is the Namazu. The Namazu is probably one of the more fascinating ones off this entire list, only for the sole reason of being <laughs> little fish people. Like, I don't even think that's like accurate or appropriate, but <laughs> it's really good. And the really cool thing about the Namazu is you get this mount right here that they're walking around with. Um, I don't know the name of the mount off the top of my head. Let's take a look. You get the Mikoshi mount. You have little Namazu tribal characters holding you up. And then when you're flying, they're just hanging on. Like, look at that. <laughs> Who wouldn't want this? Not only that, but they have some really cool like things that you unlock as far as housing, which a lot of these tribal quests do. And this tribal quest was really interesting because during the unlock like a little mini game that you can see right here, and you have to shoot the little Namazu that pop out, out of the pots. And it was really, really, really fun. I wish they, I don't know if these are playable anywhere. Maybe in the inn, you might be able to play these because the inn has some uh, mini games in there that you can play. But 
like, who also wouldn't want that? Oop, peek my, peek my uh, white chocobo mount that I got. Like, this is so cool. A lot of the tribal quests build out certain portions of the map. So that's another really interesting thing to like be able to see when you're flying around the map. This one is uh, the Namazu is a crafting and gathering one. So you will have to have a crafter and gatherer, um, which might, you know, knock this out of the running for some of you. But I'd really like to know what your favorite tribal quests are down below in the comment section. Now, with tribal quests, you should be doing these as soon as you get to the area and you unlock flying. I don't recommend doing tribal quests if you don't have flying because then it will take so incredibly long to really do the quest because you're having to run around on foot everywhere. But once you've unlocked flying, I would recommend doing them because it's one of those things that you can only do 12 a day and there's so many of them out now, it's literally gonna take you weeks and months to finish all of them if you waited to the end of the game. So even if you just pick one tribal quest and do that once a day, if that's all you have time for, you would get them done way quicker than waiting till the very end to do them. Hopefully this encouraged you guys a little bit to go out and start your beast tribes. And we have a little bit of downtime before 6.2 and there's not really much going on in the game. So this is the perfect time to start doing daily things like this that are a little bit more tedious and take away from other things in the game. In the description box, you can find all of my links to the playlist for all the videos I've made. I have controller, job guides, PVP guide, and we have a full on Sprout Center for all these kind of like beginner videos that Sprouts usually have questions about. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides and tutorials, then you can click here.